Hey everyone, Yiri here and in this video I will explain you how you can customize the templates that power the Supernova frontend documentation. Now to explain you a little bit more, when you start the documentation for your design system, you usually dream about the documentation actually representing your design system, right? It is the very first thing that most of the consumers, be it your team or someone else, um, will actually see. And so you want this documentation to represent it as closely as possible. However, with some other tools that you might have seen or tried, you can only customize bits and pieces. You know, you can maybe change a color, you can maybe change a typography and so on, which is great, but it's usually not enough. And especially for larger companies, it is really not enough. And the reason is very simple. As long as you uh, stay within the bounds that the editor provides you, then you are fine. But if you want to do something custom, then you are out of luck. And so when we've created Supernova, we actually thought to ourselves, hey, maybe there is a better solution. And I would like to introduce you this solution today. So what I have here is the documentation that we have created over the course of this series. We have some introduction with some of the highlighted tokens that we have inside our design system. I also have style guides with colors and typographies. And we've also created one component which uses our live code feature. So we are actually rendering the live code. Now let's publish this documentation and see how it looks like when you share it with your team, because you can just grab the link, send the documentation that way. If it's private documentation, you can just log in and they will be able to use all this information as a readers, as a viewers of your design system. So let's view this. Um, and we'll see what we have inside the documentation. So sure enough, we have the same structure. It's just the introduction, the style guide. And you can see that, for example, the colors and the tokens are rendered as a list. Um, and it specifically uh, shows all the tokens that we have added here. This is our default documentation template that we have. This is what you get when you start with the supernova. Now you can customize this, you know, change the colors, change the typographies, it's all possible. You can change specific aspects, but sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes you really need to go deep and change basically every aspect of this documentation. It's still, you would still like to use the CMS, right? the, the editor that we provide you because it has all the nice features like the ability to link tokens, render components, render assets and so on which is not something that you want to code as a custom feature. But you would like to have this front end, this front end of the documentation to be completely customized. So maybe the tokens render differently, or maybe the components are presented differently. Maybe you don't want to show the code or you want to add extra functionality to your tokens. Now, we do have uh, a feature that is called exporters, and I will explain you exactly what they are right now. So. When you go to settings of the documentation, the very first thing actually that you see is something that we call active exporters. Now exporters are basically packages that define the entirety of the template that is needed to run the documentation. And this template has several, several options and it has several, uh, several pages, I would say. One, for example, defines how the entire structure of the page is rendered, the layout and so on. But there are also templates for specific elements and there are also templates for your custom functionality, which I go into in specific video. Now, if I would like to change this template, what I would have to do is to basically take our basic template that we have and then modify it to my liking. And I will show you how you can use a new template that you have modified uh, in inside your documentation. So I said that the exporter packages are basically bunches of template, right? So I've created a, a repository that basically backs those exporters, this package that contains all those templates. And I have it opened right here. I've published it in my GitHub. And this exporter is the default exporter that everyone has available because many of those exporters are actually open source, including the default documentation exporter of Supernova. Now in here, you will see some configuration, some sources, some assets that need to be included when this documentation site is generated. But you can think about it Sim very similarly as if you would be using Gatsby, for example, with the vast difference that you also have the editor available inside Supernova. 
Now, if I would like to customize this, uh, this experience for my users, what I would have to do is to go and fork this default exporter, basically create a copy. And then in this copy, I would change some of those templates. So I went ahead and I forked the exporter. And as you can see, I have new uh, exporter repository called uh, Yiri slash exporter documentation and forked from the base documentation exporter, which basically makes it so I can change anything inside this exporter, but it doesn't uh, change the upstream, uh, upstream code that I forked from. Now I can use this exporter, this exporter package and go into my Visual Studio and I can modify anything that I want to. If I switch to my Visual Studio and show you maybe thing or two, the exporters are just templates basically. And in here, uh, one of the templates that I have is actually how do I render the tokens, right? So in, in this example, you can see that I have uh, some HTML tag that gets rendered. And then also I'm getting a token from a specific context uh, and we uh, switch between different types of um, between different types of the tokens. So if it's color, I want to render the hex color. If it's border, I want to render the border, va border values and so on. All of this is explained in a separate tutorial. We don't really have to go into how the templates work or how you work with them or how you modify them. But what I want to say is that I went ahead and I've changed this exporter quite drastically, as you will see. So I've changed all the aspects, layout, the colors, how each of the element is rendered and so on. And now I would like to add this exporter, this new template that I have created into Supernova so I can use it. So I will go back and what I will do is just copy paste the link to my new exporter. I will go back to the cloud. And what I would like to do is to have the option here to actually switch between the active exporter. And to do this, I will go into code integration. We talk about code integrations in different videos, but for now, I will just show you how exactly you work with the custom documentation exporter. So you would go to store and you would create basically a new exporter package that you are contributing. This package would be private, but if you want to, if you really created something amazing, you can also make it public. So the entire community benefits from it. Now I want to make this exporter private because it's not perfect enough. So I will do this. I'll click on new. And as you can see, we have a new exporter, a new package uh, that we can inject into Supernova under our workspace. It will only be available to everyone in our workspace. So I will copy paste the link. I will confirm this. And now Supernova will install your exporter. And as you can see, we have now a new exporter available called Iris template, which is what I have created. We can also pull new versions uh, from here. So if you make any change, you just hit pull the latest version and the exporter will be updated to the latest version. So we can be constantly improving those templates and they will be improving your design system documentation. Now we have to use this uh, documentation exporter. So what I will do, I will go back to design systems and select the one that I was editing, go to the documentation, go to the settings and change. Now, as you can see, I have two exporters available because I've made one available to the entire workspace. So I can actually switch this um, active exporter, this package that renders uh, the documentation front end. And if I do this, you will see that some of the things change. Now, what doesn't change is the editor. The editor experience is always the same. You know, you can use all the nice functionality like the blocks and so on. You can do all the editing. What does change, however, is the front end. Now, one thing to note here is that the front end doesn't change automatically. You are in charge of when this change happens. So you actually have to republish the documentation before the change happens. You know, uh, this is because we want to give you the power of choice. We don't want to do changes on your behalf, especially such radical changes as you will see. So now the documentation has been published, but it has been published under a new template, right? So uh, what you see here is the previous one that we have opened. But if I reload this page, you will see that we have actually changed the template quite dramatically. So now you can see that, uh, the, for example, the header menus are completely different. 
uh, the side menu is also different, the typography and colors, everything else is different. Uh, the search is missing because I don't want to have search here, but I could, I could also change the search functionality, for example, to connect to Algolia if I want really great search experience or anything, uh, anything else that I want to do. Now you can also see that we have changed the rendering of certain aspects of the documentation. So instead of having tables, for example, for each of the tokens, I do actually have a list of tokens in this nice uh, visual way presented inside my, my docs. And this is all possible because I have just changed the underlying HTML, CSS and JavaScript that powers this documentation. Now the change is actually really simple. Uh, this is probably taken about two to three hours to a person who actually knows uh, what they are doing. So I would say within a day, you can actually have your complete documentation restyled to your liking. And we as a supernova also are helping companies like yours uh, to do this. So if you are interested, uh, please let us know. Now let's just see the other uh, elements that have rendered. So. In here, for example, you can see that they are no longer tiles, but there are those blobs of colors. And I've also added the functionality here, where if you hover over a specific token that you reference inside the documentation, it will actually show you some of the color, uh, some of the values that you can use inside your code base. So this is what I wanted to show you. I do think that the templates are probably the most powerful feature of the documentation. And in the next video, I will actually explain you that the exporters are not only for the restyling of the documentation, but they can also contribute uh, additional functionality to whatever you are doing. So I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.